Hi, uh, this video is going to be on current dividers and it's part two of a series. Uh, in this circuit we want to find out what the current is going through this branch and what the current is going through this branch. Oh, excuse me. We also want to find out what the voltage is on this, re on this resistor and the voltage on this resistor and this resistor. So automatically um, we can see that each of these branches are in parallel with the power supply. So we know that they, well, this branch has 120 volts across it and from here to here this branch has 120 volts across it. So we're going to start off working on the, on, uh, the voltage on, on the first resistor. So here I wrote it down, the current I1, which is this one, is equal to the voltage V1 divided by R1. So here's would V1 would be pulled across here and R1, well that's it right there. So we just got to plug in and chug some numbers in here real quick and that's 60 ohms and the power supply is 120 volts, so we're just going to plug in those values. So uh, the current I1 is equal to 120 volts divided by 60 ohms. And I1 is going to be equal to 2 amps. And so now we know what the, what the current and the voltage is on that resistor. So now let's go to the second branch. Uh, let's find out what the voltage is here, and this is 20, a 20 ohm resistor. So we're going to use the voltage divider rule for this one. So we're going to say the voltage on V2 is going to be equal to, uh, let's see, so that's going to be R2 divided by R2 plus R3. We're going to multiply that by Vs, which is the total voltage felt across this branch. So we're going to plug in those values and we're going to get 20 over 20 plus 40 times 120. Let's go down a little bit more. So that's going to be equal to, let's see, it's 20 over 60 times 120. 60 goes to 61. 60 goes into this twice. So V2 is going to be equal to 40 volts. And now we've got that one, so now let's go on and solve for V3. Now we want to solve for the voltage going across this guy. So here we have a 40 ohm resistor. We again are going to use the voltage divider rule to solve for that one. Although we really don't have to. I mean, it would be a lot easier actually just to say, just to say look, I know that I have 40 volts here. And if I know that if I have 40 volts here, and that it from here to here is 120 volts, all I really need to do is subtract the voltage on this guy from the 120 volts, and that'll give me this one. But uh, that's convenient when you only have two, resi two resistors. But if you have something like five or six resistors, and you want a particular voltage, it's not too convenient. So I'll just plug it in here how you could solve it. So here's this. So you put R3 over R3 plus R2 times the total voltage. R3 was, I believe, um, 40, 40 ohms over 40 ohms plus 20 ohms and multiply that times 120 volts so that's going to be 40 over 60 times 120 that goes into that uh, once 60 goes into that twice so the voltage on uh, V3 is going to be equal to uh, why did I put a zero here? that's twice it's going to be equal to 80 volts. So, uh, and we could test that out too just to make sure. So we could just say the total voltage on the su of the supplier, that branch is actually V2 plus V3. V2 was 40 volts and V3 is 80 volts. And that equals 120 so that checks out. Uh, yeah, so now we got the total voltage, well we have the voltage on each one of the resistors. So now we can solve for the current going through that branch. Now we could just say, okay, well, the current going through this one is equal to the voltage on this resistor divided by its resistance. We could do it that way. Or we could do the same thing on this guy. Or we could just add these both up and, uh, well, I'll just do it uh, a few ways just to show you. Uh, let's get down here. Give me some more space. More space. So I think it was I2. We can say it's equal to V2 divided by R2. And V2 was equal to 40 volts. And R2 was 20 ohms. So that's 
2 amps. And we could use the other one and say, well, I2 is also equal to V3 divided by R3. And V3 was 80 volts, and R3 was 40 ohms. So that checks out as well as 2 amps. But there's an even easier way to do this one, which is actually quicker. If you look here, you'll notice that this branch has a total resistance of 60 ohms. And this branch has a total resistance of 60 ohms. So the, the current is actually going through both of these equally. So there's some current here, IT. The total current coming this way is split up half here and half here, and that's just because it has the same resistance. Since it's the same resistance, it's going gonna, it's gonna to split up the, the current in half equally. So since I knew earlier that this was 2 amps, I actually already knew that this was going to be 2 amps. And, uh, and it's always true if these are equal, um, if they're equal resistances. So if this is 60 and this is 60, it's going to uh, split it in half. If this is 2 ohms and this branch has 2 ohms, you know, it's gonna, it'll, it'll do the same thing. It'll split the current in half. So now, since I know this has 2 amps going through it, and this has 2 amps going through it, I could just add them together because I could say, I could say the total current, IT, is actually equal to I1 plus I2. And since I know this is 2 amps, and this is 2 amps, I know that the total current is equal to 4 amps. And uh, you could solve it that way. So, all right, I hope you liked the video. Um, and good luck in your classes. I mean, if you, if you want, you can subscribe and you can see which uh, which are the next videos that I'll be, uh, that I'll be coming out with because I'm going to put a few more on the current divider. So, hope you enjoyed the video and good luck in your classes.